All right, we're up to the last 10 comics, so you guys stay with me. All right, next on the stage has a book out on Amazon called The Alphabet of Everything I Hate. Give it up for Jason Velez. Thank you, Kwame, for getting those Amazon sales up. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, this, this comedy career is going pretty much how I pictured it because I still live in my mom's basement. And, uh, and as a result, I'm, I'm a fun guy. I like to play video games. Who else lives in their parents' basement? Anybody? No? Yeah. <laughs> we got a couple honest people. It's a fucking recession. Like, it's not called the boomerang generation because three people moved back home, all right? Uh, I love to play video games and... Um, and just like, like I, I really feel like it's warping my mind a little bit because uh, like now I don't feel like I have a problem looting a corpse for money or items that'll help me along my journey in any way. I, uh, I just smash pots when I go into strangers' houses. I actually, what, what it's done most for me is just completely warp my sex life. Like now, like there's these things out on uh, Xbox Live, on the Xbox Live, I don't know if you kids have heard of it, but they're called achievements. And you get achievements in certain points for like whatever you accomplish in a video game. I have turned it around and turned them into sex achievements. Like, a, like Speed Racer, be able to finish under 20 minutes. Uh, are we there yet? That's where you finish two minutes after she asks you if you're done. And uh, Rapid Reload, that's where you get to finish two minutes after prematurely ejaculating. <laughs> you guys play video games? Is, like, this only cor is the Asian corner the only fucking corner that plays video games? Do we have to... Like, I, I was like holding it up to Jesse Jarvis and Clay and that fucking racist Jew kid to like uphold stereotypes and I gotta be the fucking one to do it? God. Sean's not even up here hassling me right now, wondering if I'm going to say the N-word anytime soon. Awesome. I, uh, I like to play board games, right? Wrong, because board games are fucking lame. Seriously, who plays board games anymore? I play video games, people. I fucking told you already. Nobody plays board... All right, all right. correction, girlfriends play board games so they can seem relevant. <laughs> And that's anybody who's ever had to play Cranium sober on a Friday night. No, all right, all right, to give it up to you ladies. Uh, you guys don't just play board games, you play crazy mind games as well. And, and a fun growing game that uh, I like to call, how many jumps does it take to get to the center of a Mazda Miata through the windshield? I don't know, let's ask Mr. Al. In case you guys were wondering, the answer is a three. <laughs> Fuck that Al and his stupid hat. <laughs> I want to check his credentials. <laughs> I, uh, what, uh, what do you guys think the Founding Fathers would say if they were here today? Because I think it'd be something along the lines of, where are the black wenches at? <laughs> Or probably, what the fuck is a cell phone? <laughs> I, uh, other than video games and board games, I enjoy internet porn. Yeah! Awesome. I'll follow you, I'll have you guys on this one. I have invented a new thing, like, I don't know, like, if you guys like internet porn, you realize, like, after, like, you're done when you're cleaning up or whatever, you know, after the video, and you see, like, the plethora of comments under each, like, under each porn video, like, and it's totally unoriginal, like, it's nothing but dudes, like, yeah, I'd tap that, like, no shit, you just jerked off to it, dumbass. <laughs> so now, I, look, my name's Jason Alexander Velez, so now, every time I finish a porn video, I type J-A-V in my time, into the video. Like, I'll type, like, J-A-V in 7.53. <laughs> And it's good just because like all the comments underneath are just like, it's a three minute video. What was he doing for four minutes and 53 seconds? <laughs> I, uh, Mechanicsville, you'll love this one. Uh, my mom, all right, bought me a nook, thankfully, because that bitch didn't read about a Kindle fire. <laughs> and 
And so she gets me this nook, and uh, and she goes to borrow it to like surf the internet, I guess, Amazon, Overstock, what the fuck do you guys look up? And uh, and she comes up to me and she's like, Jason, your entire search history is internet porn. Did I just buy this for you so you just look up porn on it? And I'm like, Mom, don't worry, I don't use it for porn more than like 10, 15 minutes a day, tops. So I'm trying to keep my time down. I've been doing it since I was 12, God damn it! I need something to hang my laurels on. <laughs> I, uh, all right, you want to derail a fucking relationship as quickly as possible? Go to a sex shop with your girlfriend and your significant other. Because then you can give every sexual inadequacy that you've ever imagined a name, like penetrator, exterminator, or even better, there's actually a dildo with Obama's face on it called Head of State, just in case you want to get fucked by the government, literally. <laughs> and in case you were curious, like, you can't outguess the internet. There's no outsmarting the internet or looking up anything in particular or special. Like, I tried looking up, like, girls sucking off zebras just because I thought that was the most random thing you could think of. And granted, it's just a horse painted black and white, but it still fucking counts, right? <laughs> But, but it's uh, like, all right, ladies, if your boy, if you see on your boyfriend's search history, barely legal porn, that just means that if he could jerk off to 17 year old girls making videos of themselves, he would, all right? And I know like in barely legal porn, like they make this whole big deal about like small titties and pigtails, meaning you're 18. No, I can spot varicose veins on an Asian a fucking mile away. Thank you. Thank you guys. Give it one more time for Jason Velez. Give, give it up for Mechanics, though, for just being here and taking these jokes. Yeah, I'm never visiting that place now. I'm scared as shit. Oh, God. Um, all right, next, coming up to stage is Joe Shea. Woo! Woo! Hey, friends. Hey, real talk, this is, a, this is a great crowd. We don't usually have crowds like this. Comics, clap for the crowd for a minute. Show some appreciation. I really like this. Yeah. So I, uh, I want to start off talking about my friend. We went to high school together. He's living in New York City now. He is a model in New York City. And uh, I called him up. I wanted to talk to him. And I wanted to tell him that as someone who's trying to make it as a comic, you know, it's real inspirational for me to see here's a guy who's chasing some long shot dream. He's in, you know, this the greatest city on earth and he's really making it happen. And uh, this asshole tells me he says, well, you know, Joe, we're really kind of in the same situation. You know, we're both chasing our dreams. We're doing the same thing. We're really kind of, we're the, we're the same person, basically. I don't know what he thinks I do, but his day is he wakes up in the greatest city on earth and goes and takes pictures of gorgeous women trying to stare an orgasm out of his G.I. Joe body. And then he gets to go club all night and I, as a model. I work at a bakery. I serve uh, bagels to overprivileged frat boys. And I go home and wash the cornmeal and shame off my increasingly overweight body. And then I come to a bar and try to be more entertaining than a muted television. <laughs> he, told me, he told me, he was like, nah, man, it's good to hear from you. You know, I'm trying to stay to my roots. You know, I'm trying to stay grounded. Like, grounded, dude, you're a model in New York City. You should have five girlfriends and a coke habit by now. Are you kidding? Goddamn. You're a waste of talent. <laughs> I did used to be mad skinny, though, before I started working at this bakery. I, uh, I did. I don't know who laughed at that. I'm not saying I'm fat. Fuck you. But, like, I used to be mad skinny is the point. That's the setup. I'll cue you for the punchline. I used to be real skinny. I was walking downtown in Charlottesville, where I'm from, and, uh, this old woman comes up to me one time, she looks at me kind of funny. And she says in that, in that quiet old woman voice, she says, I know you. I've never seen her before in my life, but I'm not gonna be rude. So I'm like, yeah, I know you too, what up? <laughs> she said, you're that skinny Ethiopian boy from the TV commercial. <laughs> He's starving. I said, you 15 cents a day. I'm like, shit. <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't know what an Ethiopian sounds like. I don't have an Ethiopian accent. <laughs> she took me to Taco Bell. That shit was great. It was a good day. <laughs> nah, man, I'm, uh, I believe the term is fiscally irresponsible. 
found this out. Yeah, that's right. I'm at a bar. Better believe I'm not the only one. I, <laughs> I uh, saw this report on millionaires talking about like how millionaires live, what they spend their money on. And uh, they had this dude, I forget how he got his money, but he had like a solid $10 million, you know? But he drove like a pretty shitty car, like a, not a terrible car, but you know, like a 96 Kia or some bullshit like that. And they were asking him like, dude, you have $10 million. Why don't, why don't you get yourself a Lamborghini? He says, you know, I don't think it's uh, responsible to spend 10% of my wealth on a car. Ladies and gentlemen, on a good day, I have like $300 in the bank. I spent 10% of my wealth at Papa John's, all right? <laughs> Fiscal responsibility is not my strong suit. <laughs> I ain't got it. So, uh, fun fact about me, when I was in second grade, we took some like state test, everybody took the state test. I got second in the state. I was the second smartest second, uh, yeah, second grader. Overcame that obstacle. <laughs> It's never too late to be a fuck up. I, uh, yeah. Where are my cradle robbers at? Who's played that game? <laughs> Bullshit. That's a uh, whatever. I'm not really ashamed of it. My, in my defense, I'm pretty sure this is a quality legal defense. When we met, she was doing calculus, and she didn't seem like a sharp kid. So I figured college was a pretty reasonable guess. I should hold up in court. <laughs> You guys sensitive? I'm gonna, I, I got more cradle robin jokes, I don't even fuck. Yeah, well, it, it wasn't, it, like, sex is sex, you know? There was nothing weird about that part. What was weird was after, because, like, that sort of highlighted how different people we were. Because, you know, we finished up, and I got up, I was like, listen, I'm gonna go have a beer. We got some juice boxes in the fridge, if you want a juice box. Are you, you guys have kids or something? What the fuck? Nothing? All right, god damn it. That is bullshit. Move on, I guess. I, uh, <laughs> I went down to, uh, to North Carolina to meet the, uh, the my girlfriend. I met her family. And uh, she kept trying to tell me, you know, you're going to meet this family member, but they're real traditional. And after, after a couple family members, I figured out that when someone says that someone's traditional, what they're saying is they're really politely racist. Like, they're not a dick about it, but they don't understand that, like, mulatto doesn't fly anymore, all right? <laughs> Be like, Kurt Cobain, get away with that shit, and that was about it. Hey, that's my time. Thank you all for coming out. <laughs> give it up for Joe Shea. All right, next, coming to the stage, please give a round of applause to Rukumani Ramachandran. I said it right, thank you. All right, we're down to the final five comics. Are you guys ready? I, no, I gotta hear. Cafe DM, you guys have been here for like too long. Get ready, get loud right now. All right, give it up for your next comic, Michelle Batty. Hey, thank God for white teeth, because I didn't know where the fuck he was. Oh, no. uh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you guys see something run by? What the fuck was that? Uh, but, um, yeah, it's weird. I, uh, this wasn't my plan in life. I didn't want to stand up and be funny and shit. So I'm like, God, why did you bring me here? But then I've been watching all these fucked up people saying some nasty shit, and I realized God wants me to pray for you. And, and so I shall. Um, but I, I was looking for the... Um, uh, sorry, that's all right. I'll pray for you too, sir. Um, I'm a recovering drug addict, alcoholic, anorexic, and bulimic. Right? Yeah, so that's why I'm here at a bar. Because I also like to torture myself. Because this is fun. But really, I'm looking at all of you thinking, fuck you and you. And... But then the guy fell outside, and I thought, sweet. All right, that's, all right. that's, why, that's why I'm here. But um, so I've been married for 21 years. Right, right. But sober a year and a half. So really, that's about, we're newlyweds. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, it's weird, but it's cool. The, the first time we started having sex again was really awesome. And I was like, oh, baby, that was fucking awesome. And he's like, yeah, that was good, right? And I'm like, I totally didn't even know you had skin. Like, I just, I had no idea. Like, there was somebody, he's like, where'd Vera go? Vera was the alter ego. Um, a lot of women like to fake it, but I'm not into that. And so my Vera made sure that you hit the G over and over again. And, uh, and now, now I kind of ruined sex, which is really interesting. But, um, you know, like last night, my husband had a canker sore. And I'm like, you know what, that canker sore is going to kill it. So we're going to have to lose the canker sore because it's reminding me like the last time that we had sex. And um, I kept picturing that guy's blackhead. And uh, yeah, and he's like, wow, well, thanks for being so honest. But, uh, you know, it's good to be. I also have four children. Thank you. Right, I do like them. And so nobody's clapping, which means that you've seen my any nipples from breastfeeding. So that's good. It's like a freak of nature, but, um, but it's good. Breastfeeding's good. Um, I often try to get it going again, because, um, you know, it's funny. All these men are like, oh, you know, I'm all about sex and dildos and uh. And um, I feel really bad that you're not getting it on, because I happened to bring my dildo here tonight, so we were just getting it on in the back. But, um, but you might not know, but women get Wamards. Like, we're in the day, and we're hard, too. But the reason why we carry around so many dildos is because, you know, I never know what bitch is going to pass by, and I'm going to want to pull her hair. And um, so, you know, I take it in the Target restroom. Um, but, yeah, and, you know, I feel really sad for, for men, like, you know, I often wonder, what's up with those guys that, you know, they're all, you know, top, they're hot on the top, they're strong, they got the abs, and what, what women really like is like a Nicki Minaj ass. And I don't understand why guys don't work on the ass. Because I know you're all feeling good, and, mm, but we want to spank it too, bitch, all right? You know what I mean? So. It's all right, though, but I often find myself, I just quit smoking, so when I was, right, so when I was sticking my head out the window still smoking, um, I was thinking about all the things. I, look, I can't give up everything, all right? I'm not fucking eating carrots and trying not to throw them up. So, um, but, but it's funny, I, you know, sometimes I look at people and I think, what in the fuck? Like those ladies with, I got a neighbor and she's got some big ass eyes. And she freaks me out. She's always surprised. She's surprised. And I'm like, what the fuck is she so surprised about? Like, I didn't even say anything. And she wanted to be my friend. But I was like, I can't with those eyes. Because what the fuck is going on? And what am I supposed to do? You know, I just want to be big too. And uh, it's the, the lazy eye people. You're like, what do you... What? What, who, who are you looking at, you know? And it's really uncomfortable. You try to just focus on one thing. But I always wonder, do you, what the fuck are you looking at? Like, is it this one? Or, you know what I mean? I've always wondered, what's up with the eye? How do you feel? Like, if someone can just share what it feels like to have a lazy eye. Does anybody have one in the audience? Good, well, then I didn't offend anybody tonight. But the next time you see one, ask them for me. What the fuck are you looking at? You know, it's like, what's up? But, um... You know, there's other things I don't understand, like fluffers. I'm cool with the fact that some, you know, guys like to, before the porn, they want to get the old, I want to get a big heart on. But, um, you know, how do you go home? And you're like, Mom, I got a job, I'm getting paid really well. Yeah, I'm a fluffer. Like, what the, how do you go home and put that on Facebook and someone was looking for posting? You know, it's like, I don't know, fluffins for ugly fat chicks, I guess, but um, they can meet me at the bulimic meeting afterwards if they need. All right, thanks. That was my first time. Thanks for diversionizing me. Give it up for Michelle Batty. I totally called my mother. You are, you are done. Like, I hope you like your hair, because she likes it full hair. Yeah. 
I can't see me. Call me Colgate, by the way. My name's not Kwame. I'm Colgate. My teeth, white. I brush it. Brush it white. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.